This is going to be a different type of video than from what I usually make. I'd say that in, in a lot of ways, this is a video that I used to be kind of scared to make just because of how off-brand it would be for me. I'm the comedy guy, poking fun endlessly at anything humorous I could find in film or music or video making in general. Mostly because comedy is something that is inside of my comfort zone, I'd say. This is more of a video essay. Something that I've wanted to make since starting this channel, but didn't think I exactly had the skills or self-confidence to make it. But now, after some thought, I think that this is the perfect time to talk about this topic. Ever since I discovered how much effort went into film, I immediately wanted to become part of the process and always have since. Ever since around age 13, I went out of my way to learn just as much about film independently as I possibly could. Studying the craft and writing and all the legends and figureheads of filmmaking. I find a lot of fun in making fun of bad films because I know even bad films have had an enormous amount of effort put into them, which makes their failures all the more hilarious to me. But when a film is genuinely great and transcendent, that's a feat that I couldn't even comprehend accomplishing. Making a truly great and thematically significant film is a difficult task, and the very first time I remember watching a film and immediately remembering and realizing that it had an inherent meaning and importance to it was when I was 14 years old and watched 2001 A Space Odyssey for the first time on DVD. This video is not about 2001 A Space Odyssey, but I still feel like it's a film worth mentioning because it's the first time I ever truly thought about a film. I thought about what it all meant, all the symbols and character interactions, and I spent days upon days just thinking about how everything flowed together so well and about how it embodied a unified narrative. Narrative is a key word in this video because to me, a great film is exactly the same as a great novel, just told in a way more compelling way to visual learners, which I happen to be. 2001 had an incredible narrative and thematic impact that never left me, and for around four years, I considered it to be my favorite movie by a mile. That is, until I saw Funny Games. Sorry to disturb you, I'm staying next door. Please, come in. Wow, that's a really great set of clubs. Mr. Farber. What? Ah! Yeah! Have a seat, please. I'm Paul. We're gonna make a bet now. You bet that you'll be alive tomorrow at nine o'clock and we bet that you'll be dead. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Catch the tiger by the toe. If he hollers, let him go. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. <laughs> Funny Games is a film made by acclaimed and also controversial director Mikkel Haneke, an Austrian filmmaker whose career spans almost three decades. This movie is actually a shot-for-shot -shot remake of his Austrian film of the same name from the 90s. A director making a shot-for-shot -shot remake of his own film is unheard of and sounds kind of pointless and obscene, right? Well, this is just about the only time I could ever imagine a situation like this working out for the film. Not to get ahead of myself, let me explain the plot of the film first. On a denotative level, funny games can be explained with a simple byline to the extent of... An average suburban family goes on a vacation to a secluded lake 
only to be brutally murdered by two young men. Now, that sounds just like every home invasion film that you've ever seen, doesn't it? Well, on the surface, yeah, it is. In fact, the series of events within this film are much less enjoyable than the average home invasion film due to the slow build, noticeable lack of visual violence, and almost no plot twist whatsoever. I know that it may seem odd I'm tearing my favorite movie of all time down so much before diving deeply into it, but that's just because I want to make sure you realize how this all works to the film's benefit instead of its detriment. Put it bluntly, Funny Games is one of the most ingenious statements on entertainment that I have ever seen in a medium. When I saw this film for the first time, I was slightly confused at its end and felt unsure about how I felt about it as I went to sleep that night. Beforehand, I went on Wikipedia that its themes were simply anti-violence, which admittedly it contains much of, but as soon as I realized that the entire film formed together, I realized that it was a subtly negative statement towards entertainment in general. Upon second watch, I discovered that almost everything that made me initially unsure about the film was actually a unique way of supporting the film's theme. For example, take the two villains of this film. Paul and Peter are two of the most standard-looking white college students that you could ever find. Throughout the film, they occasionally break the fourth wall and also tell contradicting backstories about why they're doing this to the family. Ultimately, it doesn't really matter why they're doing it, nor does it matter who they are or what their story even is. All that you need to know is in the title. This is a funny game to them, or so we're initially led to believe. I think that the theme of this film was explained perfectly by the final scene. On the boat, one of the boys is rambling about a book he read or a film he saw where the character was able to speak to both the material and immaterial world. Now, while the speech fits in with his bizarre character, it's also the key to understanding the film. In that scene, the boy realizes, or the boy reveals, that they aren't the ones deriving fun from their games, but it is instead we, the audience, who derive fun from their games. The boys never really seem to gain visual pleasure from these murders, it's more of an elaborate performance that they're putting on for someone, that someone ending up being us. Every time one of them looks directly into the camera or does an action that appears out of place, such as the scene where Paul rewinds time after Peter is murdered just to save him and continue the games, Look out! <laughs> Where's the remote control? Where's that fucking remote control? <laughs> okay, that was the test run. Now we're gonna go for the Olympic gold. If you can say this little, unfortunately, much too short of a prayer backwards. <laughs> With no mistakes, not only will you be able to decide which one of you bites it first, but also, and I'm sure this is going to interest you even more, with which device, whether it's the fast and almost painless big gun, or the slow, drawn out... It's acknowledging that we're the ones watching it and you're doing this all for us. The only reason that he would rewind the scene in this film is to ensure that more violence would occur for our own viewing pleasures. Haneke is making a statement about how we consume violence in this film and how it shapes us as a culture. Sure, we root for the protagonist to win, but we desire to see blood and entertainment along the way. Funny Games does this the exact opposite as how we'd expect, as everyone in the family is killed off in an unspectacular manner, while almost every scene regarding violence is either shown from an angle that makes it impossible to see, or just cuts out the violence aspect altogether. It's also worth mentioning that when Peter quote-unquote dies, that's the only scene where violence is actually shown in its entirety in the entire film. Immediately after the scene is rewound, you can see Paul hitting the main actress, but the shot happens off camera again. Everything is reset back to its original state and violence is back to being not shown as a choice by the director. This is a genius way to play to the audience's expectations of this type of film while also cementing that the villains get no satisfaction from these acts and instead do it simply because we watch them do it. Hanaki makes us all feel like the real monsters in this film for wanting violence and then receiving it in an unsatisfying way. 
While some may see this as unpleasant or uncomfortable viewing, I think it's the exact opposite. I see funny games as an experimental opus in filmmaking. The fact that it's a shot-for-shot -shot remake of one of his earlier films only helps to enunciate Haneke's point even more, as he's showing how fickle we are as audience members to sit and watch the exact same violence that he's previously shown us, uh, constantly only wanting the exact same formulas over and over again. It's legitimately funny in a twisted way that Haneke remade his own film, changed nothing at all, and all the points are even simply stronger because it's a remake. When reviewing this film for a second time, I got when viewing this film for a second time, I got such a strong sense of joy while watching the theme unfold that I've never felt while watching a movie before. I mean, sure, 2001 had a recognizable theme, but not one that had such a specific meaning that could be dissected in a way such as this. Not only is it fantastic on a thematic level, the film is nearly perfect on just about every other filmmaking level as well. Needless to say, every actor does a phenomenal job, truly encompassing their character's roles. There's an excellent nearly eight minute shot of Naomi Watts just attempting to stand up and grieve over her son. And it's one of the most powerful performances I've ever seen done by an actress. Also, the cinematography is equally immaculate, reminding me a lot of The Shining era Kubrick with slow steady cam shots. There are insanely long takes with almost no music whatsoever, which helps convey its realistic tone, a tone that makes the situation feel even more uncomfortable and twisted than it already is. Anaki truly shows himself to be a unique voice and true auteur behind the camera in Funny Games, as this movie is impressive by almost all standards. Even if you find the movie to be boring, unconventional, or unsatisfying as many others do, you can at least appreciate the artistry. And in conclusion, I think that's partially why I was afraid to make a video on this film. Funny Game sits at a nearly offensive 51% on Rotten Tomatoes, which I completely understand the controversy of the film, but the conscientious is completely wrong. As you can see here, as I've stated before, uh, this film is not violent. It cuts away from the violence to prove its point. In many ways, the opening scene of this film tells you everything and anything you need to know about it. Just take a look at it for me. Bjorling. Suliotis? Close. Bjorling is easy. Tabaldi. You win. My turn. sits happily listening to the chaotic music play as they continue through life, just as how he perceived this violence with joy. It isn't a film that bashes us over the head or scolds the audience, it's simply one that reveals the truth in a clever manner. Funny Games does not get the credit that it deserves, it's a wickedly vicious and well put together piece of cinema, and one that frequently is overlooked and misunderstood. If I can convince even one person to watch it or second guess their opinion, then this video did its purpose. To this date, no movie has ever affected me or my creative process like Funny Games has, and I feel like no movie might ever do that again. And because of that, and with this video supporting evidence, I can say with confidence that Funny Games is my favorite film of all time. Well, for now, at least. Hey guys, uh, i just like to say thank you so, so much if you're still watching the video by this point because I know it's probably not the easiest video to sit through, but um, i just like to show my appreciation to everyone who's watched it so far and everyone who enjoyed it. I put a lot of effort into this, definitely more effort than any of my other YouTube videos. Not that I don't put effort into my other YouTube videos or anything, I put equal effort into all of them, <laughs> just more equal effort into this one than the others, you, you, know, you know what I'm saying? But uh, I'm very proud of how this video turned out. I think this might be the most important thing I've made so far. So if you could like and share and subscribe, I would really appreciate that. 
I'm usually the type of person to make fun of people for like saying like, share, and subscribe, and I meme it a lot in all my other videos, but really, it, it would mean a lot to me if you guys could do it here. And uh, thank you so much for showing your support. If you want me to make more videos like this in the future, just let me know, and I will be sure to do that. And once again, thank you guys so, so much.